Assalamu alaikum dear students how are you i hope all of you will be fine welcome to another video lecture on the wasteland by ts eliot and in this video lecture we will discuss about section 3 of the wasteland the title of section 3 is the fire sermon in last lecture we discussed about section 2 that was a game of chess right and in this section uh, in this in, in this lecture we will discuss about section 3 before looking at the text of the poem we have to see the introduction of the section right the fire sermon the the title is borrowed from the sermon of lord buddha wherein he said that the world is on fire burning with the fire of hatred with the fire of infatuation with birth old age and death sorrow lamentation and misery grief and despair all these are on fire the pith or incense of this section is that lust burns up life one can conquer lust by suffering and pain but passing through the fire this is opposed to modern idea that sex should be enjoyed without any regulation oscar wilde puts it thus the only way to resisting temptation is yielding to it this was the concept of the modern society regarding temptation and attraction physical attraction towards the opposite gender right uh, now we uh, go through some interpretation and the critical appreciation and development of thought regarding this poem what has been explained in this poem right and then we will move forward towards the text tiresias describes the scene on the river thames in the autumn season the river is now deserted there are only vestiges of summer parties when rich businessmen held picnics on the river banks the pollution of the river stands for spiritual degeneration of the modern man and his civilization as the protagonist stands on the river bank he hears the merry sound of london crowds and the sounds of motor horns calling girls to their lovers london is an unreal city full of sexual perversion the man of business and commerce mr eugenides has come to london he is interested in enjoying sex relationship in the hotel in the evening when the typist girl comes home from the office she wants for her lover he comes after dinner and enjoys with the girl the girl is indifferent but feels re re relieved after the sex act it is the kind of animal like sex which modern young men and women have here there is the uh, you can say the criticism and satire on the and on the approach of the modern society as tiresias moves through the streets of london he hears music coming from a tavern here the fishermen and sailors are having a good time along with uh, oil and tar there is sex on the river thames in earlier days elizabeth and her lover had pleasure excursions on the river now the daughters of thames gives stories of their seduction the three girls first from richmond the second the second from morget and the third from margaret stands margaret sands tell their stories of rape such people have nothing to complain as this is a common occurrence on the river and its banks you see that these kinds of things are happening with them 
and they don't complain they just uh, uh, describe the stories read the stories but they don't don't complain about these stories because according to them this is a normal occurrence it, it, it just happens there and no one is there to whom they can complain this is a big criticism on the modern society conclusion of the poem lust and rape are responsible for corruption and decay of modern society this kind of degeneration prevails in all classes of society the upper class the middle class and lower class the poet prays to god to save the modern world from spiritual decay and death this is the plea this is the request or prayer of the poet to god that the modern society should be uh, saved it should be rescued from these kind of spiritual destructions and death right and in this paragraph we will have uh, another uh, overview about why the title has been given to this section as the fire sermon the title has a reference to buddha's famous sermon which is popularly known as the fire sermon according to buddha the whole world is on fire of hatred fire of infatuation for world's old age and death sorrow lamentation misery grief and despair saint augustine the christian monk has made a similar confession of his youthful temptation he said to cartridge then i came where a cauldron of unholy loves sang all about my ears both pieces refer excessive sex craving incontinence without discipline sexual appetite will ruin both men and women this is the point of view of the poet right now we are moving forward towards the text and its explanation right all of you uh, have the text with you and we will have a close analysis of the text through its paraphrasing okay <coughs> the river's tent is broken the last fingers of leaf clutch and sink into the wet bank the wind crosses the brown land un- unheard the names are departed we are told in the beginning uh, about a scene at the river bank right about uh, which river river thames that is in london right all of you will be familiar with that river the scene at in th- at that river is being presented the holiness of the thames river has come to an end the last leaves of the autumn season fall on the bank and sink into the water the wind blows over the brown colored land unheard the nymphs who used to play on the river bank have gone away nymphs mean the uh, the fairies that were used to be on the river bank sweet thames runs softly till i end my song the river bears no empty bottles sandwich papers silk handkerchiefs cardboard boxes cigarette ends or other testimony of summer nights the names are departed the poet addresses the sweet thames and requests her to flow softly till he finishes his song at this time the river does not carry empty bottles and sandwich papers and silk handkerchiefs and cardboards cardboard boxes and cigarette ends or any other remnant of the picnics held on summer night 
and their friends the loitering heirs of city directors departed have left no addresses by the waters of leman i sat down and wept sweet thames run softly till i end my song sweet thames run softly for i speak not loud or long but at my back in a cold blast i hear the rattle of the bones the chuckle spread from ear to ear the young here the poet says the young girls have disappeared as also their friends and lovers who are wandering successors of executives of city firms who will not come again to the river i sat down by the waters of the dirty river leman and wept sweet dames run softly till i finish my song sweet dames run gently i shall not speak either loud or long and my back at my back the cold wind which blows brings to my ear the sound the sound of the bones and the coarse laughter from people nearby tiresias tiresias is the protagonist of this poem he hears the shouts of Londoner, londoners and their fitful laughter here the casual approach of the people of that city is being presented that what is the condition of the river bank what is the condition of city how for what purpose they come to the river right a rat crept softly through the vegetation dragging its slimy belly on the bank while i was finishing in the dull canal on a winter evening round behind the gas house musing upon the king my brother's wreck and on the king my father's death before him here the vulgarization of business is being presented a rat moved softly through the grass dragging its dirty belly on the bank while i terrestrious was busy finishing the stagnant water of the canal on a winter evening behind the gas house i was reflecting upon the fate of the king mentioned in the tempest and on the king who was my father actually tiresias is the same character that was in uh, oedipus rex you uh, have read earlier right he is brought into this poem by the poet and he is blind and he is just observing all these things so this is this should be kept in mind by you white bodies naked on the low damp ground and bones cast in a little low a little dry garret rattled the rat's foot on year to year but at my back from time to time i hear the sound of horns and motors which shall bring swine to mrs porter in the spring i began to think of the white body which was lying naked on the low damp ground and the bones of skeleton through thrown in a, a little low garret which were disturbed by the foot of the rat from year to year now i hear from time to time sound of horns and motors at my back which is the single 
which is the signal from Sweeney to Mrs. Porter for meeting in the spring. He is actually portraying how the people used to meet there, right? And what was the condition, what was the place like that? Oh, the moon shone bright on Miss, Mrs. Porter. And on her daughter, they wash, they wash their feet in soda water. Here, this is the line in uh, some other language, right? And there is a uh, side of uh, a kind of music, right? Jug, jug, jug. This kind of stuff, so rudely forced theory. This is the uh, portion regarding the musical composition okay and in that they say the light of the moon shows brightly on mrs porter and her daughter they wash their feet in the soda water in place of natural water at this time i hear the song of warlang Berlin, which mentions the purity and holiness of children's care singing of the holy grails i also hear the song of Felomela turned into a nightingale this was the same Felomela that was discussed in the last portion a game of chess her pathetic story is presented as a case of barbarous rape in this uh, the, the the poetic composition where which is in the in the end of uh, this stanza uh, till line number 205 the story that was presented in that song right unreal city unreal city i told you that is the uh, reference of london unreal city under the brown fog of a winter noon, Mr. Judenides, the, uh, the Smyrna merchant. Smyrna is the place in Turkey. He has come from that place. Unshaven, with a pocket full of currents. CIF London, documents at sight. Ask me in demotic French. To lunch, to luncheon at the Cannon Street Hotel. This was the address that was to be uh, the, where he had to go. Uh, th that was the name of hotel. To, to luncheon at the Cannon Street Hotel, followed by a weekend at the Metropole. That person has to go there, right? Now the vulgarization of industry is being presented london is a commercial city under the brown fog of a winter noon mr eugenides the smyrna merchant comes unshaven with a pocket full of bright grapes he also carries business and shipping Shipping uh, business and shipping documents. He asked me, Tiresias, in French slang to lunch at the Cannon Street Hotel to be followed by a weekend of enjoyment at the Metropole Hotel. At the Violet Hall, when the eyes And uh, when the eyes and back turn upward from the desk, when the human engine waits, like a taxi throbbing, waiting, I, Teresius, though blind, Teresius is blind, I told you earlier, throbbing between two lives, old man with wrinkled female breasts, can see at the violet or the evening or that strives homeward and brings the sailor home from sea the typist the typist home at tea time clears her breakfast 
her stove and lays out food in tins now here he is describing about a typist girl who is doing job in a in an office and how she uh, finishes the work and goes towards the home and uh, the title of this stanza you can see this is the mechanical sex relations of a girl of a working girl in the evening when it is time for offices to close the girl typist rises from the seat and gets to leave the office actually the uh, mechanical routine of the modern girl is being presented that in london how uh, that type of girls had to work and what uh, from uh, morning to evening and how what they had to face what was their life she is like a taxi throbbing and waiting i she was um, uh, a kind of machine in the modern life she had to do job she had to uh, bear the temptations of others okay i tiresias though blind hovering between two lives an old man with wrinkled female breast can see in the evening how people go homewards the sailor coming home from the sea and typist returning to her home at tea time she clears her breakfast table which she has not cleared in hurry in the morning lights her stove and prepares her meal out of the tins of food stuffs she is, uh, actually he is narrating about the mechanical routine of the modern man through this girl right now he will uh, describe about that what kind of uh, routine she has to face what kind of uh, situation she has to face at home and by coming from the office she was she remains busy in the office and and at the home she has to do a lot of work out of the window perilous, perilously spread her drawing combinations touched by the sun's last rays on the divan her on the divan are piled at night her bed stocking slippers camisoles and strays i teresius old man with wrinkled dugs perceived the scene and foretold the rest i too awaited the expected guest now he is say, uh, observing her uh, home from outside and uh, he is he is telling us that out of the window there are uh, uh, she, she she had her clothes and like they uh, all those things that were washed and she had to get them dry there and he was looking at those things and he was closely observing he uh, teresius is also describing his own physical appearance right and uh, he he says that he uh, he according to his perception there is someone who has to come there and uh, an unexpected uh, sorry expected guest according to teresius according to the speaker and the poet that the girl is free now and he from his uh, office and now she is at home and someone has to come at her home right he the young man he the young man carbuncular arrives a small house agent a small house agent's clerk with one bold stare one of the low one of the low on whom assurance sit as a silk hat on a bradford millionaire the time is now propitious as he guesses the meal is ended she is bored and tired and he was to engage her in care uh, in caresses which still are unreproved if undesired flushed and decided 
he assaults at once, exploring hands and counter no defense. His vanity requires no response and makes a welcome and makes a welcome of indifference and makes a welcome of indifference and i teresius have for suffered all enacted on the same divan or bed i who have sat by thebes below the wall and walked among the lowest of the dead he is explaining about the arrival of that young man a young man with a pimpled face arrives at this place he is a house agent's clerk who is adventurous but rather self confident self confident his assurance and firmness appears like a silk hat on a bradford millionaire the young man knows that he has come at the right time the typist girl has finished her dinner she is bored and tired the boy starts uh, making love to the girl and his advances are not rejected though not desirable actually uh, tiresias is uh, narrating now the the scene whatever he observed he was observing all that from uh, you can say uh, the window or somewhere when that young man came to the girl's home and they had uh, the physical relationship that uh, all of that uh, act has been presented there and he is also when he says uh, he, he also says that i have said uh, uh, i teresius have suffered all this on the same divan or bed I have sat by Thebes below the wall and walked among amongst the lowest of the dead. He, Thebes is that was the city where Oedipus Rex was acted, and uh, he, he he is saying that this, all these things were observed by him there, right? So now the young man gives final kiss, and all these things the when, uh, when the young man was there in. the girl's house what kind of love they made all these all the detail is being presented by theresius in the uh, here in this stanza okay then he says bestows one final patronizing kiss and gropes his way finding the stairs unlit she turns and looks a moment in the glass hardly aware of her departed lover her brain allows one half her brain allows one half form thought to pass well now that's done and i am glad it's over when lovely woman stoops to folly and paces about her room again alone she smooths her hair with automatic hand and puts a record on the gramophone now we see that uh, the young man gives one final kiss and finds his way through the unlit stairs out of the house the typist girl turns her head and looks for a moment in the mirror she is hardly aware of the departure of the lover her brain is busy in one half formed thought now that the thing is done she is glad that it is over when a lovely woman stoops to fully this is a line from goldsmith's the wicker wakefield she must realize the consequences the typist girl walks in the room again all alone she smoothens her hair with her hands and mechanically puts a record on the gramophone here a very careless and casual approach of the people towards physical relationship is being presented that they are just using this natural phenomena for uh, temporary enjoyments right now we move forward towards the next lines 
this music crept by me upon the waters and along the strand up queen victoria street o city city i can sometimes hear beside a public bar in lower thames street the pleasant whining of a mandolin and a clatter and a chatter from within where fishermen lounge at noon where the walls of magnus martyr hold in ex in explicable splendor of lonian white and gold now he is explaining about the scene that is on that is in london on the river right here are the varieties of entertainment the music crept by me on the waters a line this is the line from shakespeare's the tempest and along the busy strand up to queen victoria street oh london city i can sometime hear a different type of music different from the gramophone record the pleasant tune of a mandolin beside a public bar near lower thames street disturbed by the clatter of folks and the conversation of fishermen relaxing themselves in the pub at noon nearby stands the church of magnus martyr which has beautiful paintings in the white gold on its walls all these appearances all these uh, uh, has been presented the surroundings of that city right the river sweats oil and tar the barges drift with the turning side with the turning tide red sail white to liver swing on the heavy spar the barges wash drifting logs down greenwich reach past the isle of dogs velala lea velala lelala this is actually a type of uh, you can say the musical composition in opera okay in uh, that the song of thames is being presented the water of the river is covered with oil and tar the barges move with the turning tide the red sails swing on the heavy span mast or pole towards the shelter side the barges wash drifting logs of wood down towards greenwich past the isles of dogs as the music of wagner's opera comes from the river bank greenwich uh, all of you know that is the place in england where uh, from where the time is decided the modern time uh, span is decided uh, where uh, that is the point according to which the time of the whole world from england from united kingdom is uh, you can say the difference is counted okay elizabeth and lancaster beating oars the stern was formed a gilded shell red and gold the brisk swell rippled both shores southwest wind carried down stream the pearl carried down stream the pearl and uh, the peal of bells white towers velala lea velala now that song is con- being continued and we are told that elizabeth cruise on the t- uh, about the elizabeth cruise queen elizabeth uh, also used to visit there 
right according to him queen elizabeth and her lover the earl of leicester row a pleasure boat on the thames river the stern of the boat had the shape of a shining shell of red and gold color the brisk waves produced ripples on both the banks of river the sound the southwest wind carried the boat downstream the sounds of the bell could be heard from the white towers situated on the river bank the music from wagner's opera comes from the houses situated on the river bank the music is continuing and uh, he is presented how queen elizabeth used to visit that place along with her lover right and in next lines trams and dusty trees highbury bore me richmond and kew undid me by richmond i raised my knees supine on the floor of a narrow canoe canoe is a type of boat now in this portion of the poem the stories of some girls are being presented those girls from lower, lower society of london and how they were exploited sexually the girls who live on the banks of the river thames relate their sex experiences the first daughter of the river thames was born at highbury which is full of trams and dusty trees the she visited richmond and kent which are picnic spots on the bank of the river at richmond she was criminally assaulted by a man while she was lying on her back on the floor of a small boat here the poet uh, shows that how the girls used to explain used to relate their experiences and they uh, I, i i told you earlier that they didn't have complain with anyone according to them that was the you can say the that was a common occurrence right now another girl explains my feet are at moorgate and my heart under my feet after the event he wept he promised a new start i made no common i made no comment what should i resent that the other girl says the second daughter of the thames was reve ravished at moorgate after the act the man felt repentant and wept he promised to reform himself the girl has no regrets this is part of her life now we are told that that uh, the, the girl was uh, the other girl was explaining about the story and uh, he according to her that uh, she has no regrets that she was raped by the person and she is also telling that uh, the person who raped her she fe- he felt repentance after doing that act okay and he promised to reform himself that he will not do this thing afterwards next story is being presented on margate sands i can connect nothing with nothing the broken fingernails of dirty hands my people humble people who expect nothing la la to cartridge then i came burning 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 oh lord thou pluckest me out oh lord thou pluckest burning this is the end of the poem and in uh, while ending the poem he narrates the third daughter of the thames who was ravished on the margate sand 
she should not remember anything she compares herself to the broken finger nails of the dirty hands which are useless her parents are poor and expected nothing a tune from uh, wagner's opera can be heard on the river bank the third daughter she also narrated she uh, but she did he does uh, actually she does not remember anything she just uh, remembers that the the place right and that the place was margaret sen where she was raped okay and her her parents are poor and expect nothing right and uh, that uh, they had no expectations from society the section ends with the five with five lines from st augustine's confessions where he refers to his visit to carthage this city was burning with lust st augustine prayed to god to save him from the fire of lust in his grace god saved him the idea is that prayer and god's grace can own can alone save the modern man from the fire of lust and evils of modern civilization now we are uh, we are told about this kind of approach of the modern society that they were involved in uh, physical relationships just for the exploitation just for the temporary pleasures it is being criticized by the poet and he is of the view that so that society must be saved from these kind of evils and it can be done by god's grace right so uh, this was the end of the poem and uh, you have to prepare all the important uh, points uh, of the critical appreciation uh, from the introduction from the paraphrasing from the text and i hope you have learned the main ideas of the poem the story and uh, the background the con- the context of the poem and it will be very much uh, helpful for you and uh, try to uh, note it note it down uh, the, all the important aspects and good luck to you for your assignments for your exams hopefully in the next video lecture we will cover the next part of the wasteland thank you very much and good luck